多謝全會，即、就、係、是、你哋各位誒嚟、呃、到我哋今日呢個嘅記者招待會嚇。咁、啊、就、呃、我就係獅子山學會嘅行政總監黃佛啦。咁喺我隔離嘅就係誒飛沙研究所 f r a s e r Institute 嘅 Fred 阿媽誒麥馬昂先生。咁佢係飛沙研究所嘅研究員。咁啊，主理誒呢一個經濟自由指數咧，係已經好多年㗎啦。咁就經常咧都有每一年咧都呢近呢幾年每一年都會嚟香港咧，就對於我哋誒嘅經濟自由指數咧，都對香港誒有一個評論嘅。咁我想喺度問下咧，呢度係咪其實大部分都係中文傳媒，有冇英文傳媒啊？呢度好似大部分都係中文傳媒。咁我諗我哋進行呢個記者招待會嘅形式，就、呃呃、如果有需要嘅，咁我會為大家有一個誒嘅傳譯啦，咁或者你哋如果有問題發問，如果你哋係用中文問嘅，咁我就用英文去話俾阿 Fred 聽，咁然後誒佢哋就答你啦，咁或者我就簡單嘅用中文咧去誒、呃、summarize 下佢佢嘅言論咁樣，咁誒、呃、有咩問題嘅就可以，你哋都可以舉手咁睇下我幫唔幫到大家，咁就誒，咁、呃、其實呢個經濟自由指數咧。喺誒舊年喺、呃、上一個月咧，就其實已經公布咗啦。咁但係咧，今次我哋邀請咧阿 Fred 嚟到咧，就係、是、純粹就係按住香港、啊、我哋特別我哋一有咁嘅情況啦嚇，咁、啊、去講下咁呢個今次一個、呃、指數對於我哋香港嘅未來、啊、有咩啟示呢？呃呃、我哋嘅法治特別咧，佢喺佢最初嘅新聞稿嘅時候咧。誒公布喺上個月公布新聞稿嘅時候咧，係對我哋嘅法治咧係有啲嘅言論嘅。咁誒誒，究竟呢個指數對於我哋啊將來嚇、啊、我哋嘅法治啊香港法治誒咩啟示咧？咁我而家將以下時間就將個 presentation 咧，將佢個誒 presentation 就俾個時間佢，咁佢就同會同大家講解。咁之後就歡迎大家提問嘅。So Fred, now I will hand over the time to you. Well, thank you very much, Peter, and let me thank uh, you for coming here uh, today. Let me thank the Lime Rock Institute, uh, Peter Wilson Raymond, uh, for organizing this event. Uh, just let me quickly add how lucky people are in Hong Kong to have an organization like the Lime Rock that constantly has its eye on good economic policy to build prosperity for the people of Hong Kong. I'm here to talk about the uh, economic freedom uh, of the World Annual Report and uh, Index. Um, this measures, uh, it's a 30-year project. The research phase involves 60 of the world's top scholars, including three Nobel uh, laureates. It measures the extent to which uh, people are able to make their own uh, economic uh, decisions. Uh, People have economic freedom when the property they acquire without the use of force, fraud, or theft is protected from physical invasions by others, and they are free to use, exchange, or give their property so long as it does not violate the identical rights of others. Uh, we look at uh, five areas: size of government. If uh, government uh, taxes you too, taxes your property too much. Or is so large that it reduces the space for free exchange. That reduces economic freedom, private property, and the rule of law. And this is what we are primarily here to talk about today. The rule of law is the absolute infrastructure of economic freedom. If your rights and properties are not protected by the from the invasions of others, or from a greedy elite, or from an overpowerful government. Uh, but if they are not protected by uh, a fair and dispassionate rule of law, then economic freedom disappears. You can have weakness in the other areas of economic freedom and still have a high degree of economic freedom. Weakness in the rule of law is completely destructive for economic freedom and long-run prosperity. Sound money, government can tax uh, your property away as easily through inflation as it can through taxation, uh, regulation and tariffs. Obviously, Hong Kong has built its great wealth on trade with the uh, rest of the uh, uh, world. Uh, regulation of business, labor, and credit. Uh, you should be able to start a business or close a business when you wish. Hire whom you wish or employ whom you wish uh, and lend to whom you wish 
or borrow from uh, whom you uh, wish. Uh, we were just uh, talking with some Australians who uh, showed that it uh, took uh, weeks to register a business in Australia where you could do it o literally overnight in Hong Kong. Uh, this is a huge enterprise around the world. We have partner institutes in over uh, 19 nations and of course two territories, Hong Kong uh, and the Gaza Strip. Uh, numerous uh, regional indexes and translations. I'm just giving you a sample of them. And here are the results for 2014. And as for every year since 1970, Hong Kong tops the list of the freest places in the world. And as you can see from a look at the uh, bottom uh, 10, these are not particularly places where you would want to live. Whereas economic freedom, in my view, uh, has made Hong Kong the best place in the world to live. I envy each and every one of you here for being able to live here, and I wish I could. Um, because economic freedom is such a powerful generator of growth and other good outcomes, uh, it has continually grown over time, and even during the economic crisis, uh, there was only a minute retreat. I'm going to quickly look at Asia, Hong Kong, and the world. Uh, Hong Kong has maintained uh, a very high level of economic freedom, uh, around nine for over 20 years, for, for a quarter century now. The gap is closing with Asia, but it is not with the Asian average, but it is not closing because of weakness in Hong Kong. It is closing because Asia is getting more economically free. And, but Asia could do much better. As you'll see, the Asian pattern of improvement almost exactly parallels the world pattern of improvement. So Asia should be able to do better than the world growth. Why is economic freedom important? A century, more, more than a century of experience shows us that the drive and ingenuity of individuals uh, beats government planning or uh, greedy crony elites hands down every day of the week in producing prosperity. But it is also essential for other rights. Economic freedom liberates you from dependence uh, on greedy elites, liberates you to express other freedoms and move towards democracy. It also changes the dynamics of a society. Without economic freedom, whoever wins power also wins control of the economy. They can reward their friends, uh, their members of their sect, members of their tribe, members of their ethnic group. This sets group against group and divides society. <coughs> However, when, and it's a zero-sum game in that you win by making others worse off, and that's a very bad dynamic. With economic freedom, you can only get ahead by improving the lot uh, of others by producing goods and services they voluntarily want. So you move from a system where you get better off by creating tensions and making others worse off to a system where you get ahead by making others better off. Uh, so as you can see, the most free quarter of nations have an average per capita GDP of about $40,000 a year compared to around 6000 for those with the lowest average level of uh, economic freedom. Economically free nations grow uh, more quickly. Uh, you know, people say, well, economic freedom is fine, but it advantages only the rich and the powerful. Uh, this is the income of the poorest 10%. And as you can see, the poorest 10% in the most economically free nations have an average income of $11,000 a year. The average GDP, the average income of the poorest 10% in the least free nations is merely $1,000 a year. We spoke about, or I spoke about, um, how economic freedom generated other freedoms and civil rights. And this chart shows that relationship. 
Uh, economic freedom battles corruption. If, there's, if you don't have economic freedom and you have to give somebody's permission to do something, there's always someone to pay off. If you can do something without asking somebody's permission, then there's no one to pay off. Corruption dissipates. Uh, this is a nice chart. Economic freedom is an independent generator of happiness. And this appears to be because economically free people have control of their own fate and giving you, and when you have control of your own fate, your life satisfaction uh, improves. And because you're an independent agent with your own personal opportunities rather than simply a member of a group, it emphasizes the need for a good education and it closes the gap between men and women, girls and boys. Now, now I'm going to turn to a discussion that touches on the demonstrations that you all know are happening here in Hong Kong. There are many reasons, there are many motivations for these demonstrations. Of course, part of it is exactly what the demonstrators say, a desire for democracy. Part of it uh, has economic roots. And part of it is concern that if the mainland exerts too much control over Hong Kong, it will erode the very institutions that have made Hong Kong great. Most specifically, the rule of law. Neither Hong Kong's prosperity cannot continue without the rule of law, and frankly, China will never reach Hong Kong's level of prosperity unless it develops the rule of law. Now, Hong Kong actually has a pretty good rule of law, but of the five areas of economic freedom I discussed, the rule of law is the weakest area already in Hong Kong. In every year going back to 1970, the rule of law is lower than every other category of economic freedom in Hong Kong. That said, Hong Kong still has a strong rule of law. You can see the average rule of law in the world, and you can see how much Hong Kong exceeds that average level of rule of law in the world. So while it may be a relatively weak area for Hong Kong, it is still a success for the people of Hong Kong. Now when you look at the gap between Hong Kong and China in the rule of law, you see a similar pattern. In fact, China is typically below the world average in rule of law. Um, China seemed to be catching up to the world average, but over the past several years, its rule of law has actually been deteriorating. Slightly, but still deteriorating. Hong Kong is 23rd in the world in rule of law. That's good, though I must say Hong Kong could do better. Its rank has been stable since the year 2000. But China is 71st in the world in rule of law. And it has been declining, albeit slightly, for the past several years. One of the concerns of the demonstrators might well be that if China, if the mainland gains control of the selection of the chief executive, through that, over time, the way the basic law works, China will also be able to gain control of the appointment of judges and justices uh, in Hong Kong. In other words, this raises questions about the future of one country, two nations, if the mainland tries to impose its views and values on the judiciary in Hong Kong. It is disturbing that a mainland white paper has called for judges to be patriotic. Judges should enforce the rule of law. That's their job. Patriotism is for flag wavers and politicians, 
but the only way you have a rule of law is that judges follow it ahead of all other priorities. So I think there is reason over the long term to be concerned about the stability of the rule of law in Hong Kong and the mainland influence and I think that is one, only one granted, but one of the key factors motivating the pro-democracy uh, demonstrations. Uh, we are very transparent at the Fraser Institute. All our data and research can be downloaded for free at these two sites. Peter, thank you very much for uh, organizing this, and I'll hand it back to you. Uh, thank you, Fred. 或者我好簡略啦，咁我我相信大家都誒，即、呃、係大家都理解啊。Fred 誒佢想 make a point， 咁但係誒我簡略地去 summarize 下一個重點啦。咁就係誒發，即係誒佢一路講誒自由經濟誒，佢、呃、個個報告係點樣計出嚟㗎啦。然後就當當中佢有講嗰誒幾點嘅就係話，即係發字好緊要啦，嚇冇發字咧，咁就亦都好難有好嘅經濟表現啦。咁根據佢嘅研究咧，香港仍然係一個好令人羨慕嘅地方嚟嘅，咁、啊、佢、呃、都想喺度住嚇，咁誒誒，亦、啊啊、都佢有講到就係而家嚇嗰個嘅示威活動啦，嚇、啊啊、我哋稱之為佔中啦，咁、啊、就會有唔同嘅原因嘅，咁咧就有、呃、要求民主嘅原因啦，咁、啊、亦都有啲係要求經濟嘅，即係譬如話樓價高啊，買唔到樓啊咁樣。咁亦都有一個原因咧，就係、是、因為中國咧有人擔心咧，中國咧係會影響我哋法治嘅。咁啊，講開香港嘅法治啦，嚇、啊、雖然香港嘅自由經濟指數咧，咁其實好高嘅。嗱、啊，咁頭先阿 Fred 講有五個範疇啦，咁但係咧喺法治方面咧、呃，比起其他嘅四個範疇咧，嗰、那個嘅分數咧，其實係比嗰啲嘅平均分數咧係低嘅、呃。一一係二嚟咧，都係有咁嘅現象㗎。咁呢，而我哋香港嘅法治呢，就有別於我哋嘅總分我哋總分排第一啦。咁但係呢，我哋香港嘅法治呢，現在呢，誒、呃、誒，就係、是、排第世界排第二十三嘅。不過雖然話我哋係排第十三，咁但係呢，香港嘅法治呢，仍然都係遠高過誒、呃、世界啊同埋亞洲咧嘅平均數嘅。咁特別呢，係同我哋嘅誒祖國嚇、呃、大陸政府呢去相比呢。Uh, what's the ranking of、uh, rule of law uh, uh, for China? Seventy first. 嚇，咁就中國咧嘅法治咧係排第七十一啦，咁就同香港咧係有一個嘅差別嘅嚇。咁誒，另外咧，阿 Fred 咧都有講到啦，咁就係誒，即係對於誒我哋嘅誒司法制度嘅獨立嘅司法制度咧，係誒，如果我哋係誒冇一個誒，即係點解？佢解釋就點解有人係希望要求有民主，就係、是、因為、呃、我哋嘅司法制度就係由、呃、大首席大法官咧係去領導啦。咁而首席大法官咧嘅任命咧就係、是、由特首啦，嚇、啊、當然亦都要通過立法會啦。咁、呃、但係咧主要咧就係由特首咧去 nominate 嘅，去去提名嘅。咁、呃、如果你誒冇、呃、一個民選嘅特首，咁誒、呃、變咗佢揀嘅大法官咧，咁亦都係有咁嘅可能性，從一方面咧係去誒影響到咧誒、呃、我哋香港嘅司法獨立嘅。咁誒、呃、我大概係咁樣即係、就是、做個總結啦。咁就誒而家誒 ，so now we pass the time for the floor to raise question。你哋如果有問題嘅，就隨便可以發問。啊，英文、中文都可以。都想問翻咧，因為而家。即係喺佔領中環嘅好多地方嚟，即係金鐘又咗旺角，都係有啲即係禁制令，即係已經落咗嘅。咁亦都即係有啲即係立法會議員啊，又即係啲知名人士都話，即係而家係一個公民抗命，咁所以就唔需要即係遵守呢個禁制令嘅。咁其實即係會唔會覺得呢一樣嘢會即係影響到香港嘅法治啊？會令到嗰、那個即係香港嗰、那個？即係依一個指數啊，依、這個廢沙研究所依個指數喺法治方面會即係有機會受到影響，甚至降低。Uh, the question is,、uh, now we have the civil disobedience activity uh, outside uh, the government office,、um, and、uh, actually the court in Hong Kong has already um, um, issued a prohibition uh, asking uh, the crowd to leave. 
uh, but uh, because the crowd uh, is saying that uh, we are doing uh, civil disobedience, um, uh, we should stay here. So they are not following the order from the court. So um, uh, his question is that uh, is the activity itself is uh, a violation of rule law? What's your view on that? Yeah, it's it's uh, a very difficult uh, question, and I'm glad you uh, raised it. Uh, civil disobedience within bounds, nonviolent civil disobedience, has been used by many peoples at many times uh, to gain rights and push forward the the cause of freedom. It is, however, ironic, and there's. Do you want to stop? It is, okay. how, yeah. it is however, uh, ironic, and there's no way around not admitting this, that one of the goals of the demonstrators uh, is doubtless to preserve Hong Kong's institutions, particularly the rule of law, and yet they are breaking the rule of law uh, uh, in doing it. So there's no neat way to close the circle on that. Uh, 阿 Fred 嘅答案就係話，其實誒世界各地咧都有呢啲咁嘅公民抗命咧，係爭取咧一啲嘅權益嘅。咁但係咧就誒後係佢都認同咧係非常之非常之諷刺嘅，就係誒要求公民誒公民抗命有啲情況就係要求公民抗命嗰啲人咧誒佢係希望咧係誒保存我哋嘅法治，但係諷刺地咧又喺佢哋活動當中咧。係破壞嘅法治，咁佢話誒，即係呢個係世界好多時候就係咁樣發生嚇，誒、啊、冇、呃、一個好圓滿嘅一個答案嚇。啊，但係我 mean 誒誒誒 ，I mean would it affect the economic freedom index of Hong Kong in particular the rule of law? I mean in this regard because the because the injunction has been ordered, but then the protesters outside the government headquarters. Or in Hong Kong, and they don't follow the, the I mean, the injunction. The injunction. So yes, as I say, it's an irony or a contradiction that that's going uh, on, and I can't square the circle. I can't make that uh, consistent. All I have, to, all I can do, is acknowledge that you have a good point. But but his point is, will it affect our standing? Ah, uh, next my year. My apologies. Uh, we only use uh, third-party data, so so our uh, index is objective rather than subjective. So this data is based on the year 2012, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens uh, in future years, how the demonstrations, the response of the the uh, of the um, authorities to the demonstrations and the response of the demonstrators to the authorities doing exactly what you said uh, affect the rule of law. My concern, however, is more long term. You know, the demonstrations themselves may have an impact and may have a negative impact on the rule of law. Uh, my concern, though, is much longer term if, as I said before, if China begins to have control over the selection of the C of the process or the selection of the CEO that over the long term gives them control over the appointment of judges and uh, justices and over the long term that gives them control over um, the rule of law and if they decide to enforce the power uh, the mainland authorities over the rule of law here, you will see a long-term deterioration in the rule of law here in Hong Kong. It won't happen in one year or two years. It may start to happen in five, but it is a long-term threat. And you're young enough that you'll still be wanting to live in Hong Kong as the rule of law perhaps begins to deteriorate by the time uh, you're uh, 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 you know, uh, midway through life. 
誒誒、呃，但有一樣嘢我要誒、呃，即係去 repeat 嘅就係、是、阿、啊、Fred 頭先講咗啦，即係佢今年二零一四個報告咧，其實用嘅數據咧係兩年之前係二零一二年嘅，咁所以咧誒、呃，即係大家留意一點啦。咁如果話誒、呃、佔中對香港嘅影響咧，誒、呃、應該喺二零一六年咧嗰、那個嘅 report 咧，大家就會睇到。咁誒頭先佢亦都講咗咧，就係話誒，當然而家嗰個嘅公民抗命咧。誒、呃、本身可能係對嗰個嘅誒誒，即、呃、係、呃就是、我哋嘅法治係有影響，但係呢個係可能係短暫嘅。佢更長遠嘅嘅影響咧，就係、是、如果我哋嘅特區政府啦，或者北京啦、啊、因為呢件事而更加收緊咧嚇誒嗰個嘅誒、呃，即係做一啲嘢係令到影響咗嗰個整體嘅法治咧，咁呢個係更加長遠影響咯。就即係而家佔中我係一個短暫影響，但之後政府嘅嘅嘅嘅 reaction 嚇嚇，咁、啊、就可能係一個更加長遠嘅影響。咁有冇其他問題 ？Um, just let me add very quickly that there are lots of countries that have had demonstrations that have acted illegally、uh, and still maintain the rule of law.、Uh, so the demonstrations themselves and perhaps even the immediate reactions to the demonstrations. Are not the threat. The long, the threat is long term, and the threat is to a deterioration of institutions here. So you are citing the example of other places,、uh, places that、uh, have demonstrations and yet maintain the rule of law. Sure, uh, uh, the United Kingdom has demonstrations and they maintain the rule of law. My own country of Canada has a very high、uh, rule of law, but we've had. Uh, violent demonstrations over international trade, and I think this will shock you. <laughs> We've had violent demonstrations over hockey games in、uh, Canada. So you can have these things without destroying the rule of law. It's the institutional threat that is an added dimension here. 誒咁啊 ，Fred 就話佢用即係香港就啱啱發生啦，咁但係佢用過好多其他世界嘅例子，頭先我用英國或者加拿大咧，都曾經有一啲係非法嘅活動咧，就去爭取一啲嘅權益嘅，咁但係咧就冇長遠影響到咧誒嗰個法治嘅，誒咁呢個就係頭先佢嘅答案，係咁其他冇咩問題嘅。Hi， 誒誒 ，How can One country, two systems can last、uh, as long as China respects both the letter and the spirit. Uh, of the original agreement, and that is giving the people of Hong Kong the tools to protect these uh, uh, institutions.、Uh, how long will it take、uh, to deteriorate it? If the Chinese government works、uh, through control of the chief executive officer. You could probably start seeing significant deterioration within five to ten、uh, years because they would have to start replacing judges and police forces that are good、uh, with those that are loyal to China. Now, of course, China could accelerate that by just firing all the good judges and honest、uh, police officers, but I don't think they will. I think、uh, if there is a threat. Uh, it would be slow and probably, as I say, over a five to ten year period. And let us hope that Hong Kong never sinks to the average world level of the rule of law, because then you will sink to the average world level、uh, prosperity, not immediately, again over time,、uh, and that would be. An incredible disaster for Hong Kong. By the way, just let me add one other thing.、Uh, as many, you know,、uh, many, many historians have noted, and social scientists have noted, that China, unlike Europe or unlike even the Islamic world, has never developed a rule of law system that is institutionally separate 
from government itself. So the idea of an institution that, like the rule of law, like judges, that do not obey, that part of their mandate is not to obey the government, that's not an idea uh, that has any historical precedence on the mainland. Um, that doesn't mean that it's uh, uh, not something uh, that people uh, here in Hong Kong want. People, when they see the rule of law, whether they're Chinese or Arab or uh, uh, European, like it and want to support it. So the fact it doesn't have historical precedent in China creates a risk, but that doesn't mean it's not something the people in Hong Kong themselves want. Uh 誒,所以這個基本法不變的,中央點樣可以影響到司法人員的人民啊。So, uh, this gentleman's question is, um, if you're worried about uh, Beijing uh, to influence the selection of the uh, chief justice, uh, are you uh, very well uh, read of the basic law? Are you very familiar with the basic law? And and secondly is, uh, do you know the process of uh, how the chief uh, chief justice uh, is selected and how uh, China can manipulate the selection uh, of the uh, Chief Justice. China cannot directly appoint the Chief uh, Justice. That is done by the Chief Executive Officer here in Hong Kong after uh, advice from the JOCR. What's that? The uh, Justice Direct Officers uh, Recommendation Committee. Now, so if China controls the first author, the chief executive, it then through the chief executive controls appointments. The chief executive controls appointments through two means. One, he makes the appointment or she makes the appointment. And two, uh, he or she appoints the majority of the members on the JOCR. So the chief executive officer can appoint, so Hong Kong can appoint, let's say Hong Kong controls the selection process for the chief executive officer. Then the chief executive, uh, the, then the chief executive uh, can then control, perhaps at Beijing's bidding or perhaps just naturally, the selection of the JOCR and then can appoint uh, justices recommended by the JOCR even though the JOCR is in effect controlled by the ch uh, chief executive. So yes, China has the tools to do it, but indirectly, if, indirectly has the tools to do it indirectly if it controls the selection of the chief executive officer. That's also why I say it would take time. Uh, it's not an immediate, it's not something that will happen tomorrow unless China, unless the mainland violates all its agreements. So first you control the, the selection of the chief executive officer, then he or she controls the selection of JOCR, then they control the selection of judges. So. It's a step-by-step -step process. Again, that's why I said that it's a, uh, it would take time, uh, but there is a real danger of its deterioration. Uh, 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 uh,
行,行政長官咧去任命佢。咁如果嗰個行政長官係、呃、香港人係冇辦法解嘅，咁係要由北京。去解，咁北京可以影響個行政長官，行政長官解嘅委員會亦都當然可以控制到啦。咁就慢慢一從，即係當然佢冇辦法，北京可以直接去委任或者去誒解雇嗰位嘅誒、呃、大法官，但係就從一個壓力一層一層咧。如果時間夠長嘅咧，咁你係可以慢慢咧，即係將啲誒即係官員慢慢咁樣換走，咁就係用呢個咁嘅方法咧去誒、呃、影響。你覺佢覺唔覺得呢個係一個滑波輪嚟嘅咧？誒、uh, ，so do you think it's a slippery slope? Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Or I think there's a danger of a slippery slope. Okay. So, are you saying if we use, if we elect the CEO in 2000, 2017, follow the framework raised by the central government, and the Hong Kong rule of law will eventually deteriorate? If you follow the, if Hong Kong follows the procedures laid out by the mainland government, it will give the mainland the tools to do that. Uh, in other words, they'll be able to do it if they uh, wish. Uh, and there's a real danger that they would use those tools. Uh, as you know, the mainland is not fond of uh, of dissent uh, uh, of any sort, and certainly uses those tools on the mainland to suppress dissent and enforce its power. So it will have the tools to do it. One would hope that it wouldn't do it, but I guess if they have a hammer, they will use a hammer. Two simple, simple questions. Uh, first, how, how long, actually, may I check, how long did Hong Kong rank number one in this uh, survey? And uh, secondly, are you afraid that the inference, a uh, great growing inference from uh, China to Hong Kong political and legal system will uh, eventually be harmful to uh, the ranking of Hong Kong with number one for uh, in the next two, three, or five years? We only use third-party data, so that limits how far back we can go. But we have data back to 1970, and in every year that we have data for back to 1970, Hong Kong is number one. Uh, the, uh, Singapore is typically number two. There have been times when the United States was number two, but the United States is actually, <laughs> you know, talk about the deterioration of the rule of law. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, every year. A and yes, exactly. If the rule of law deteriorates, uh, then Hong Kong will no longer be number one. Simple as that. Uh, are you afraid that, for example, in the next two, three, or five years, uh, according to the progress now in Hong Kong, would Hong Kong cannot be number one anymore? I would say that your time frame is about right. Uh, that you could see Hong Kong fall out of number one in that time frame. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to fall to the bottom in that time frame. But what you could see for Hong Kong is similar to what you've seen actually for the United States. Uh, a slow slide down that eventually erodes its status. 呃、我,我想睇下有冇啲未問過嘅朋友係想問問題嘅。其實我想了解翻，即係點解會有誒兩次嘅數據做一個買？即係、呃、如果係根據而家一四年嘅情況，其實有冇話個排名會唔會有誒變動咁樣？誒、uh, ，Why did you use data from two years ago to、uh, to calculate the ranking？ And secondly, so、uh, how would you uh, predict what happened? We will have in 1960 because of the situation we have in here now, in 2014. Uh, we use data from 2012 because that's the most recent objective data available. 
I know there are some indexes that claim their index represents 2014, but they don't have any data to, to, to base it on. They're basically using whatever they say, they're basically using data from 2012. Uh, so to be reliable, to be objective, we need to use data from uh, uh, two years ago because that's the most recent data uh, available. Um, as I said before, uh, I don't think the demonstrations in and of themselves, and at least to this point, the government's response to the demonstrations, I don't think those will cause a serious deterioration in the rule of law. How about the tea gas? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I'm in Canada. I smell tear, tear gas. I mean, we have demonstrations, uh, too. Not that I've ever been in a riot, but uh, uh, I was at a meeting in Vancouver. You probably don't want to... Do it. Well, I'll just try it. Anyway, I was at a meeting in Vancouver, and it was the last game of a hockey series, and a riot broke out in Vancouver. So I walked out on the street, and there was tear gas, and... Uh, cops and even a burning car, uh, lots of smashed windows. So it's not the actual demonstrations or the response to the demonstrations that will have the effect. It's what the demonstrations are about that might have the effect. And one of the things that they're about is the mainland's attempt more and more to impose its will on Hong Kong. And that creates the danger of imposing its will on the legal system. And when a government opposes its will on the legal system, you no longer have the rule of law. So again, just to stress and repeat, and I apologize for this, it's not the immediate effect of the demonstrations, unless the Hong Kong government decides to use a very militant military act. It is the long-term potential deterioration that the demonstrations are partially about. Uh, maybe you want to uh, tell uh, our friends more on the, what kind of uh, primary uh, data uh, to compile your index. Sure. This is the data that we use to compile the rule of law. So uh, we have uh, nine separate components and as I say we only take data from third-party sources. So as you'll see uh, five of the components are from the Global Competitiveness Report, the shortest GCR. Uh, Two of the components are from the, uh, inter the uh, International Country Risk Guide, and uh, two of the uh, components are from the Doing Business Guide. Uh, Peter, do you want to translate what these uh, are? Would that be helpful? Uh, maybe I will just briefly uh, say something about. So,
如果係嘅就俾翻翻嚟。Oh, I, you know, there are lots of competitiveness uh, threats to uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Singapore is, is certainly uh, uh, one. Uh, Hong Kong still has a small but significant gap uh, over Singapore. I'll just try to get that back so you can see it. Uh, but yes, it, it, you know, it is a danger. And another danger to Hong Kong would be uh, if China decided to favor Shanghai. In other words, would government wait behind Shanghai uh, as opposed to uh, Hong Kong? There you can see Hong Kong compared to uh, Singapore, and as you can see, Hong Kong has, uh, you know, a, a substantial thing. So, you know, again, I'm talking time. It will take time for Hong Kong to lose its number one position. Uh, but Fred, I, I have one question. Uh, how do you compare the rule of law uh, of uh, Singapore versus Hong Kong? Uh, I can look that uh, uh, up, but I don't have that right off the top okay. of my uh, head. Hong Kong, by the way, is 8.98 compared to 8.54 hmm. for Singapore. And I'll look that up while we're talking. Yeah. Uh, 其實有什麼問題呢?就是北京對香港的控制是大了 uh, uh, Frank, have you made a statement that uh, that you observe the trend? Beijing is exerting, increasingly exerting their influence on Hong Kong politics. Have you made a statement like that? Uh, I, I think uh, I haven't made a statement like that, but I think that would be an accurate statement uh, to make, and I'll explain why. But first, I'll answer your question. Uh, Hong Kong scores 7.96 in rule of law. Singapore scores 8.35. So Singapore already has a substantial lead over Hong Kong in uh, this area. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, the uh, attempt to manipulate the school curriculum, which was fortunately pushed back, is a sign of it. Uh, the Chinese calling for more patriotic uh, action uh, is a, another sign of it. And of course, this most recent uh, uh, concern about the selection of the chief executive is another sign. So yes, there does seem to be evidence that the mainland wishes to exert more influence. And of course, uh, you see the government in uh, Beijing uh, also moving to suppress what dissent there is uh, in uh, China, increasing the uh, internet firewall, arrests of dissidents uh, are up, so uh, there seems to be uh, a general move towards uh, assertion uh, of more uh, authority. Uh, uh, how do you think about, uh, because Beijing said that uh, um, the, the nomination committee uh, for the uh, chief executive, they are, uh, this gentleman is saying uh, they are loosening uh, you know, the requirements, uh, you know, adding democratic elements uh, on the, for the uh, nomination committee. So do you think is that Beijing is loosening uh, the their 
you know, the old communist states used to have, uh, uh, what is the wording in uh, the, uh, the agreement, full mandate, you know, where everybody votes, what's it called? Uh, uh, you know, where everybody votes. Uh, the universal suffrage? Yes. Uh, the old, thank you. <laughs> Not only do I need a translator into uh, uh, Cantonese, I need a translator into English, uh, too. Um, uh, the old communist states used to have universal suffrage, um, but you could only vote for a communist. Um, this, you know, so everybody could go out and vote so long as you voted for whomever Moscow or Beijing uh, or Warsaw, when it was a uh, communist country, uh, wanted. And it seems to me that uh, while what China is proposing for Hong Kong is not at this moment as brutal as that, it seems to me there are great similarities. Uh, and communist countries with universal suffrage were certainly not uh, democracies. And universal suffrage was meaningless because all you could do was vote for a communist who was loyal to whoever happened to be in power in Beijing or Moscow or Warsaw. Uh, 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 Fred just said that many of the communist countries have a few polls, but you can choose a communist party. I think he should explain the question of the first question. Gentleman's question is democracy and economic freedom. So Hong Kong used to not having democracy in the past, and and yet we are still number one. We have been number one. So uh, is democracy a parameter uh, in terms of uh, economic freedom? No. Um, democracy is not a parameter of economic freedom, nor is it a parameter uh, of freedom in general. Uh, freedom is uh, the ability to do as you wish without asking somebody's permission. With, and without uh, the government having the ability to stop you from doing what you wish. Uh, democracy is, however, a power structure. As the famous philosopher of uh, freedom, Isaiah Berlin, said, the question of who rules me is logically distinct from the question of whether I can do uh, as I wish. So, democracy is a power structure, freedom is the ability to do what you wish without constraint or coercion. Now, the fact they're two separate things does not mean they are practically uh, unrelated. So democracy is probably the best protection uh, of freedom. You don't need democracy to have freedom, but to have stable, long-term freedom. The experience globally is that that only happens in countries uh, that have uh, democracy. But no, it's quite possible to have a very high level of personal freedom as Hong Kong uh, has had without having a democracy. I think what the protesters are concerned about is that without democracy, that freedom will be eroded over time, and the central component of that freedom, the rule of law in particular, will be eroded over time. Uh, 佔中的人可能是他們問題的問題,還有什麼其他的問題。What would you comment? And uh, the Communist Party used the economic power to suppress the, the media in Hong Kong. 
what's the impact? Is it continue to be worse? What's the, the impact to the Hong Kong economy in the future? Governments have a number of tools to suppress freedom. Uh, they can corrupt the laws to suppress freedom. They can do what uh, uh, China has done, not just in Hong Kong, but attempt, has attempted globally, and that's used economic power to suppress freedom. It's still the suppression uh, of freedom. Uh, that's not directly measured in the Economic Freedom Index, but it has a number of spillover effects that will cause again the erosion and that will be picked up in the Economic Freedom Index. As discussed, the, the media freedom is a privilege in Hong Kong the part in the past and now it's losing that uh, privilege. Do you think that could possibly result in the losing the, the advantage of the exponential um, center internationally? Yeah. Uh, you say it's, it's been a privilege. I'm just going to quibble with the wording there. It is a right uh, that the people of Hong Kong uh, have. I think you would agree with that, so I'm just quibbling over. Uh, we're, yes, it's, it's not possible to have a vibrant economy in today's knowledge world without free and vital discussion. Uh, China itself despite its growth, is decades behind uh, Hong Kong. And Hong Kong, to maintain its status, has to be at the cutting edge of the economy, where China does not have to be, uh, and is not. And for Hong Kong to remain at the cutting edge of the economy, there has to be free and open exchange of ideas, and not just technical ideas, the way markets move, what can cause problems, criticism of government actions, if it gets its policy wrong. Without, without that, no society can remain at the cutting uh, edge. And to maintain prosperity and not slide back, you don't have to be just good, you have to be great. <laughs> and Hong Kong has always been great, but you can't be great if you lose that dynamism Fred 他沒有那個自由度 I don't think you would mind they come over and finally talk. No, I absolutely not. I'd be pleased and privileged. Uh, thank you very much. And again, just let me say, at least for right now, you live in the most marvelous city in the world, and I envy each and every one of you. I just hope Hong Kong remains the most marvelous place in the world. <laughs>